So I wanted to begin this sermon with a, uh, a metaphor, and the metaphor is right behind me. It is these sunflowers. Uh, the first part of the metaphor is that um, I, I talked here from the same spot three months ago, and the ground was bare. There was nothing there. The seeds were in the ground, but nothing had come up. Three months later, wow, look at it. Um, but even more, uh, even more miraculous is that when the remnants of the uh, hurricane came through this summer, um, it flattened these. They hadn't bloomed yet, um, and they just went down. Uh, and a few were left standing, but but not many. And um, and Christina and I came out right after uh, the the storm had passed, and we propped them back up and tamped down the soil, um, gave them a little TLC, and we tied them together. We bound them together with a uh, a clothesline to so we wouldn't hurt them, but um, we made them uh, one. So um, so they have as one withstood some big winds um, since then. Uh, and they have gone on, been resilient enough to go on and flower and produce amazing seeds, um, just uh, hundreds and hundreds of seeds. And the bees are ecstatically happy. Um, and Christina and I are ecstatically happy. We look at this and our hearts fill with joy, um, with love, with hope with hope, because this is what we all need to do. And I'll talk more about it in this sermon. I've been away from the church for uh, the past month for a much needed uh, vacation and retreat. Um, and I'll uh, uh, report on what I did with my summer vacation uh, before this sermon is over. But I find that the world that I am returning to has become even more troubled than when I left. Many of us are concerned about the, uh, the McLeans um, after the loss of their home to fire. Um, we are concerned about students and teachers as schools reopen. We're concerned about people who are struggling financially uh, with winter approaching. We are concerned about the mental and physical health of people we love. On top of that, we're in the final two months of an election that many feel will mean life or death, both for our democracy and even for the survivability of this planet. It's difficult not to get swept up in emotional turmoil, but over and over, the scriptures say, do not fret. Do not be afraid. Do not let your heart be troubled. Peace, Jesus says, and then he breathes the Holy Spirit into his agitated disciples. It's crucial that we find a way to return to being centered and calm in the midst of agitation. God and the world need us not to fret for one simple reason, so that we can be completely available to the Holy Spirit. Remember that after Jesus said peace and breathed the Spirit into his disciples, he sent them out into the world to do the Spirit's work. The Spirit of life has been evolving this miraculously complex, beautiful world for billions of years. It's been, it has been evolving human consciousness toward the heart and mind of Christ for thousands of years and evolving human society toward the realm of God, uh, societies whose, whose highest laws are the golden rule, love of neighbor, compassion for the hurting and the vulnerable. We have come so far and we are so close. Imagine how the spirit of life that created it all, evolved it all, feels to see it all at risk. The ultimate purpose of our existence is to serve the spirit's drive 
to create better conditions for the life of all we can. That is why we have the gifts we have. That's why we love what we love. Right now, in this time, the Spirit needs us to listen carefully to its guidance and to lean on its strength and to work as one to save all the progress that it has made and help humanity make the evolutionary leap that we must to survive. We each are called to serve this in our own way, in our own place, within our own limits and abilities, um, no, matter, no matter how small uh, that our reach may be, um, no matter how little we feel that we have to contribute, the Spirit needs us all. Ezekiel tells us that the Spirit needs us to be a sentinel, watching for danger, crying out when we see danger coming, warning the world around us that it has departed from goodness, from the sacred way. Ezekiel says that, that we are as guilty as those doing the evil if we remain silent about it when we see it. This is a heavy burden. It means that we need to upset people, and sometimes people we don't want to upset. As Representative John Lewis said, we need to get in trouble, good trouble, necessary trouble. Like a sentinel, we cannot put this off. The sentinel has to respond when danger is at hand. All that the sentinel loves, life itself, is at stake. If you listen to the spirit within you, you will know what you need to do. Now, I imagine that this may make you uncomfortable, maybe anxious, maybe, maybe angry, maybe depressed, even as we still hear echoing that call at the beginning not to fret. So how can we hold both of these together, the call to act in the world and the call to be at peace in our hearts? Well, Jesus taught us how to live a spirit-filled life of inner peace while taking on the troubles of the world, working to heal the hurting, protect the vulnerable, and overturn powerful systemic wrongs. Today's scriptures are just a few examples from, from just one chapter of the Sermon on the Mount. The first is that foundational passage for the Christian contemplative tradition. Um, it's called Prayer in Secret. I said I would tell you what I did on my uh, summer vacation. Um, well, I, I cut, split, and stacked my firewood. Uh, I, uh, I helped Christina weed and harvest in the garden. Uh, I took walks and wrote poems. Um, I reconnected with friends and family. But the main thing I did was go into my room and shut the door and pray in secret. I practiced contemplative forms of prayer, and I did it uh, inspired by Mark and Lisa Kudalowski, I did it five times a day and, uh, and for a total of two hours or more a day. And it was transformative. Now, few people uh, feel they have the time or the calling to do this. But right now, we all have a calling to get still enough inside, to get still enough to hear what the Spirit is asking us to do. We each need to find our own technique in this. I recommend centering prayer and uh, the welcoming practice that we, uh, that we learn in, 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 in the Heartfulness Contemplative Training Circle on Thursdays. Um, but you, you may also find gardening um, or walking in the woods or knitting or uh, uh, one person recently said chainsawing. <laughs> Um, you may find that, uh, that having a, a spiritual conversation with a soul friend, um, all these things could help you let go of your own thoughts enough so that you can hear the spirits. Jesus offers more advice 
um, he says no one can serve two masters. We have to choose between God and mammon, uh, between the realm of justice, compassion, and love, and the realm of fearful and closed-hearted selfishness. Uh, the, the, the spirit of life versus the ego. And sometimes we have an even harder, we have an even harder choice to make, a choice between what is good and what is best. Caution can be good. Enlightened self-interest can be good. Doing good can be good. <laughs> but not when the Spirit is calling us to do more, to take risks and lay down our lives for our neighbor out of Christ-like love. Jesus says we need to be totally free to serve God in those moments. And he asks us to live in trust. He says, strive first for the realm of God and for its right and sacred way, the spirit of life. And all these other things that you need will be given to you as well. One day, a young girl climbed into a tree and got so far that she suddenly felt terrified. She freaked out, and she, uh, she couldn't get back down. She was frozen, and she cried out. She screamed to her father, who came running, and he grabbed the stepladder, but it wasn't quite high enough to be able to lift her out, lift her down, and, 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 uh, take, and, and take her to safety. So he said to her, you're going to have to let go and reach down to me. But she was way too scared to do that. So he said, look at me. Don't look down. Don't look anywhere else. Just look in my eyes and reach one hand toward me. That's all you have to do. In an instant, she was in his loving arms and then safe on the ground. And soon she was back doing her calling as a little girl, playing and singing and bringing light and joy into the world. Remember this in the crucial hard months ahead. The spirit of life is with you always, always ready to comfort, strengthen, and guide you in the work to which it calls you. So, dear sentinels, do not fret. Let us pray in silence, practicing praying in secret, uh, in the room of our heart where the Spirit is waiting for us now. Let us pray. Amen.